lies, lies, yes, lies. If you think your swim coach is right, think again. I mean, coaches are great. I've been coaching for over 13 years, but some of the stuff that I've heard on the pool deck makes you scratch your head. Some coaches will give pretty questionable advice that's either super outdated or just downright wrong. And sure, they mean the best, but sometimes coaches will actually tell you something that might make you slower. Today I'm gonna to break down 10 lies that swim coaches might be telling you, and I'm gonna share what you can do instead. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video to get all the juicy details. The first lie, the more you swim, the faster you get. So many coaches have the old school mindset that you need to swim an insane amount of volume to be any good at swimming. And that's flat out not true. It's also potentially dangerous. All that garbage yardage could set you up for shoulder injuries and no one wants that, your coach included. Instead, you need to think about quality over quantity. The focus of your workouts is 10 times more important than how far you swim. And sure, if you're training for distance races, you're gonna end up swimming more, but that doesn't mean a sprinter's training plan is any less valid or effective. I mean, just look at Michael Andrew. He does ultra short race pace training and pretty much only swims the shorter workouts at race pace and he won an Olympic medal. So I think it's safe to say that we can throw this piece of advice right in the trash. On to the next one. Lie number two is that you can never take a break from swimming. Sometimes you're just gonna burn out. No matter what you do, your training just isn't sticking. And sometimes you need a break. But so many coaches are anti-break. Somewhere along the line, they've convinced themselves and you that stepping away from the pool, even for the slightest second, is the worst thing that you could possibly do. And in reality, it's not. Take a minute to think about it. What's the worst that could happen if you take a few days off or a few weeks off? You can get out of shape, sure, but you can get back into shape. You might miss a competition, sure, but there are more competitions in the future. Believe me, if you're experiencing burnout or your schedule is just really crazy, I'm telling you, it's absolutely okay to take breaks and it might even be good for you and make you swim faster when you do come back with that extra motivation and a fresh perspective. I mean, Michael Phelps retired from swimming in 2012. He made a comeback in 2014 to finish out his career with more gold medals. So I think we can take a month or two or even a few years off. The next lie your coach might be telling you is that you have to compete in meets. A lot of coaches get caught up in the competition side of swimming and I don't blame them. Racing is a huge part of swimming for a lot of people, but swim coaches take this too far and they push their swimmers to compete when they don't really need to or aren't even ready yet. I see this especially in the master swimming world. In reality, it's okay not to compete at all. Swimming doesn't have to be as serious as you make it out to be. It can be just a workout or a part of fitness or just something that you do for the rest of your life. There's so many other goals that you can work toward without having to squeeze yourself into a racing suit or sign up for a competition. Maybe you wanna lose weight, you wanna learn a new technique, or just get faster and keep up with your fastest lane at the pool. My point is, racing isn't the only acceptable goal for swimmers, and coaches need to understand that. Since we're on the topic of racing, next up is the lie that swimmers have to specialize in a specific race or choose between being a sprinter or a distance swimmer. Usually coaches will suggest a few events to focus on based on where the swimmer is doing well, and they'll adjust the training to align to those races and to those goals. And then boom, suddenly that swimmer has been pigeonholed into doing the 200 freestyle in every single single competition, or swimming the mile in every race, or the 50 free in every single meet. But what if you want to swim all the events? What if you want to swim a different event? Your coach might not be happy, but who cares? At the end of the day, it's all about you and your swimming journey. It's not all about winning and scoring the most points for your team. There's no rule book saying that you can only do sprint events or distance events or butterfly events or breaststroke events. I mean, look at Michael Phelps. He did a ton of events and he's the greatest of all time. From the 400 IM to the 200 fly to the 200 backstroke to the 200 freestyle, he's a monster and he was able to do it all. To maximize your training, it might be helpful to focus on a couple of similar events for two to three months leading up to a swim meet. But ultimately, just do what works for you. It is your swimming journey after all. Now the next one, is super common and a lot of swim coaches will tell you that you can't swim fast if you train by yourself. Swim teams are businesses and coaches want to keep as many swimmers on the team as possible. So of course they're going to tell you that you can't train by yourself. And sure, there's a huge benefit when you train with other people that push you, that keep you accountable. But the reality is you don't have to do that. If you train effectively, you can absolutely get a killer workout in by yourself. 
I don't know what these coaches are even talking about. Some of the best swimmers in the world have trained by themselves for years and they go on to break world records and win Olympic medals. If you swim solo and you're looking for workouts and you want that digital community, check out the My Swim Pro app. We create custom swim workouts and training plans based on your swimming times, goals, and schedule. You can download it for iPhone and Android and get ready for your next swim. Now I'll admit, Coaches are somewhat right about this next one, and so many coaches say that you can't swim fast when you're older. Sure, when you're 40, your times might not be as fast as when you were 16, but you can still throw down some very fast swims as you age. It all comes down to how you train, what your goals are, and what time you're willing to commit. The same workouts that worked for you when you were a young swimmer at 16 are not gonna be as effective now that you're age 35, 45, 65, or 85. So don't listen to coaches who tell you that you're too old or too slow, or you need to give up competitive swimming because you can still crush it. Why would we let the young guns have all the fun? There's so much more speed to be had. If you've never been to a master's meet, you know exactly what I'm talking about. World records are dropping left and right, even in the 80 plus age groups. I mean, Anthony Irvin, won the Olympics in the 50 freestyle at the age of 35, 16 years after winning at age 19. I totally understand where they're coming from, but it's just wrong. I myself am swimming as fast as I was 10 years ago in college. Sometimes doing other sports can be really helpful for your swimming performance. Think of it as cross training. You might take other sports less seriously if swimming has become your favorite, but quitting everything else altogether isn't the answer. Having other hobbies outside of swimming is really good for your mental health. Honestly, sometimes it's just nice to have something totally different to do to get your mind out of the pool. Coach, I promise that I can be a good swimmer and a skilled underwater basket weaver. Don't doubt me. If you're happy with your schedule and swimming performance, there's no reason to give up all your other activities. You just do you. And that brings me to number eight. So many coaches think that using equipment or using equipment excessively is cheating. Who are you? What are you talking about? Sure, maybe it's cheating if you wear fins or paddles in a competition, but most of us, all of us, don't do that. Equipment is a very effective way to improve technique and add resistance to build strength, power, and agility in the water. My rule is to keep equipment used to no more than 50% of your total workout volume for the week. The rest of your training should be all natural with little or no equipment. And speaking of gear, some coaches go tech suit crazy when competition time runs around. They'll require all of their swimmers to have a tech suit and make them suit up for almost every meet of the season. Now I love racing in tech suits as much as the next person, but that's just too much. The suit doesn't make the swimmer. It can definitely help, but your performance is in a race and that comes back to your skills and training that you put in, not the suit. Tech suits can make you feel like a superhero on race day, but in my mind, wearing one too much takes the effect away. You want to feel like a superhero when it counts. If you do that in practice, you're not going to feel like a superhero. If you have a tech suit, be thoughtful about when you wear it, and your wallet will thank you as well. So don't squeeze into a tech suit if you don't want to, and if you don't have a tech suit, don't worry about it. Come to race day, make it happen, it's the training that counts. So this next one is a never ending debate. Do you do dry land or strength training before or after your swim workout? Many swim coaches will say that you should never lift weights before your swim workout because it will ruin your swim. And to some extent, they're right. If swimming performance is your main goal, it can be better to swim before lifting so your muscles are optimal during that swim workout. But at the end of the day, it comes down to your schedule and what works best for you. Don't sweat it if you lift weights before you swim or if you do it after. If you can't do dry land, do it another time. Do it pre-swim, do multiple workouts. Regardless, doing a swim and a lift in any order can be a killer workout. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that coaches are great. They can make a big impact in your life, but you don't have to listen to every single word they say as the absolute truth, mine included. Think about your own training, your own goals, and apply what makes sense. Don't go around telling your coach that they don't know what they're talking about. They probably do, and they care about your success. But they've gone through a routine, they have their own goals, and sometimes it might not line up with your goals. So what do you think? Has your coach told you any of these lies? Let me know down below in the comments. If you don't have a coach and you're looking for one, welcome. My name is Ferris, co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro. You can download our app, join our community group on Facebook. It's the largest digital swimming community in the world. And even if you're on a team, it's a great place to connect and be inspired by some amazing people. 
And if you thought this video was good, you're gonna love this one right here. How to swim faster in just 90 seconds. I break down all the things that you need to know. Wish you the best and happy swimming.